about periods? Was that a rude entrance? An awkward topic? Or maybe we shouldn't talk about it right now. More than half of the world's population is female, and I still wonder, why isn't it considered normal to talk about periods? And why isn't it a basic human right to have access to menstrual products free of charge? Let me tell you a story. It all started when I was 12 years old. I remember I was at home when I first felt my underwear damp. I ran to the toilet and there it was, a dark red robe stain. Yes, I got my first period. I was so excited about it that I immediately announced this brand news to my friends. I had to let them know that I was part at last of the group of girls who menstruated. But then I had another challenge. Besides telling my friends, I had to tell this news to the other menstruators in my house, my mother and my sister. So as soon as they got back home from work, I immediately shoved down my underwear and showed it to them. My sister immediately lifted me off the floor and congratulated me. But my mother, on the other side, she simply smiled and told my sister to guide me through the process. Well, as the years passed by, I remember that I would constantly have a rash on my pelvic region. It didn't matter the brand of the disposable pad, the size, or even the frequency that I would change it. And like every other ordinary person, I decided to try out several products, like Vaseline, coconut oil, and diaper creams, but none of those would solve my problem. They would actually ease it for a while, but there it was, month after month. And after so many years of being stubborn, trying to self-medicate, and almost becoming skinless, I decided to go to a dermatologist. And when I got there, she said, why don't you try out cloud pads? The first thought that barged into my mind was, that is disgusting. Why would I ever use something that would get blood stained and I would have to wash it myself? No way that I would let that happen. So I decided to continue with my research. And out of the blues, magic words flashed onto my screen. And there it was. Clot pads. They prevent diaper rash. So that time, I decided to take a risk. <laughs> and I changed my menstrual routine. I adopted the clot pads. And that was a life-changing decision, I can guarantee. Well, I remember that while I was under, undertaking this research, I came across an intriguing term, which is period poverty. So what is period poverty? Period poverty is defined as the inability that a woman has to afford menstrual products or to have access to basic sanitation while she's under her period. Just imagine, you're bleeding from your genitals. You can't stop the flow. Blood is running down your legs. Your clothes get stained. If you sit down somewhere, it will get stained as well. You can't go out in public. You can't use the public transport. You can't go to work or even to school. Unfortunately, so many girls in both developed and developing countries are going through this situation. And because of this, and also the lack of choice, they opt to use random clots, rags, cotton wool, newspaper, or any other item that is readily available to their eyes. These practices, combined with bad hygiene conditions, expose them to several infections that can lead to long-term consequences like ectopic pregnancy, infertility, and cervical cancer. Many girls miss around four to five days of school due to period poverty, which adds up an average of 58 days a year. And due to absenteeism and the shame and the trauma, they end up dropping out of school when a girl drops out of school, she loses the opportunity of being empowered and she becomes vulnerable to whatever society offers her. 
It's a fact that girls even trade sex for just one pack of pads. That cannot be tolerated. Menstruation is natural. It's a normal process. It's physiological. From where I come from, girls are taught to stay away from boys whenever we start our menstruation. And when it says stay away from boys, I mean literally. You can't even sit close to boys. That's what they teach us. They also teach us to change our clothes all the time, to wash ourselves thoroughly, and to always, always, always keep it a secret. There's also a very important event, which are the traditional rites, initiation rites, which symbolizes the transition of a woman of a girl to a woman whenever she starts her menstruation. In this ceremony, girls are taught to clean themselves, to use kapulana, pieces of kapulana as their absorbent, but there's a disadvantage to this. They leave with, a, with the idea that they are ready to be wed. Unfortunately, up to this day, menstruation is still a taboo. It's really hard to speak to girls about menstruation. They usually turn away, ignore you, and pretend they didn't even hear you, or just laugh at the situation. If a girl reacts this way, imagine a boy. I am privileged, and so many of you here are also privileged, but many girls are not. Are not. Girls cannot choose whether to menstruate or not. It will be there month after month. It's not a problem. It's not a curse. Do not misinterpret me. On the contrary, it gives us more moments of self-love and of self-care. When I decided to change my mental routine and adopt clock pads, I learned how to embrace this process. Unfortunately, in my country, clog pads are associated to poverty because that means that you won't have to afford or to purchase menstrual products every month. Yes, there is that financial advantage, but there's also a very important emotional factor. I learned how to embrace myself as a woman, as a menstruator, as a person who has a special time of the month. And because of this, I decided to spread this news and I used a digital platform. I created a page called Ngati Yami, where girls are free to share their knowledge and experiences regarding menstruation. I love how diverse our opinions are. Some of us love menstruation, some of us don't. I remember I conducted a survey where I would ask girls whether they would continue or not to menstruate if they have that choice. Some of them said yes, of course. Some of them said no way. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we created a safe space where we can talk about menstruation. And at the same time, we are providing information to the other girls who don't have access to it. So I count on each and every one of you here to spread this empowering news and to care for girls around you. Because we all need that, both girls and boys. Hello, I'm Denise Matsule. I'm a woman who believes she has a special role in making this world a better place. I'm a change maker, a medical doctor, and a menstrual activist. I took the initiative of making this my cause to promote menstrual education and to make accessible menstrual products, reusable menstrual products to girls in my country. Like I asked in the beginning, when is it the right time to talk about this? Thank you.